taken by this feeling baby we're invincible hi guys and welcome to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. It's the Looking Forward series. Yes, I always look forward to these, uh, no pun intended, also pun definitely intended. So, uh, for those of you that might be new to the channel and wondering what this is, essentially when I finish a large save, like, you know, 160 odd episodes, which is what Knotts County was, I like to sim to the future a little bit for as far as I conceivably can. And then I take a big list of all the players that were in the team, former players and whatnot, and we look and went, we basically go and look at how their careers turned out uh, after they left the club, did they go into management, etc., 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 as well as some other stuff from around the league. Uh, so that's what essentially we're going to be doing. Now, it's a five-part series because before I used to try to combine it all into one video and it just didn't really work because it just ended up being a slog, right? So what I've done uh, is the same as we did with the last series, essentially. So we're going to start off with today's episode with the FIFA World Cup and the Euros, but then we're going to go into and do 20 players as well. Now, the players have been randomised. So I took a list of all the players that were at the club who I was interested in, a load of players that were formerly at the club, uh, and that basically made up the rest of it. It was exactly 100, believe it or not. And then I've randomised it. So we got 20 of those in each episode. So uh, yeah, you'll have to wait and see to, for who's in this one. I can tell you off that today we're starting with Oleg Kazhikov, uh, that Russian left back we have for a little bit. So don't worry, there's some goodies in it. Worry not. So, where to begin? So, obviously, FIFA Club... Wait, no, not FIFA Club World Cup. FIFA World Cup 2058. That's what we got to. Um, I've simmed it overnight on Friday to Saturday, uh, but then obviously I had to stop it for doing the stream. And I simmed it a bit last night as well, and that kind of got us the rest of the way up to a reasonable point. So we've essentially gone kind of like four years... No, 24 years into the future. That was the most I could do. Database is obviously pretty slow, but it's not as far as we went last time. No, not even close, but... It still should give us enough data. Every player will be retired. A lot of them will have gone into management and be comfortable. Some of them will be in their 50s, to be fair. People like your Marvin Suarez is. The guy's going to be in his mid-50s by now. So that's a reasonable amount. So looking at the World Cup, I think the best thing we can really do for looking at the World Cup is we'll have a look at the most recent one in terms of stages and whatnot. But I think the best thing we can really do... Whoa, that's... Group, so many bloody groups, man. Um, any surprise packages actually even qualifying for it for a start? So Canada being there is kind of cool. Uzbekistan actually got out their group. Panama did not. Qatar got absolutely smashed. Cape Verde, Iran, Peru won their group. Guinea Bissau uh, actually qualified. Dr. Congo in there as well. Uh, who else we got? Trinidad and Tobago, unfortunately, get dicked on in their group. Uh, but yeah, we'll go and have a look at the actual history because that's probably easier uh, to sort of see how things have gone. So in this save, obviously, I mean, you won't actually probably know about a lot of these because we didn't really focus on it that much. So it was a very much Germany, Spain, Germany, Spain, complete domination fest during for the main save for the most part. Uh, I mean, we had France getting to the, you know, runner up, Belgium coming runner up, Argentina getting in there as well. Uh, third place, generally the usual suspects, Brazil, Germany, Portugal, Mexico coming third, though. That's pretty impressive, particularly as it was in Japan. That's pretty cool. And then in 2038, France actually won it, but Ukraine were the runners up with Chile coming third, which is a bit more surprising. Italy got themselves a World Cup as well, which is, I mean, about time, really. It's been, what, 36 years? Croatia getting themselves yet another runners up medal, but not quite enough. Paraguay, though, that's probably the biggest surprise. I'd say the fact that Paraguay have actually won the World Cup, having come from sort of nowhere, which suggests to me that they probably get some, like, seriously good footballers. The problem is we're already too far in the past, really, to have a look. Although we'll have a look at them in a sec, uh, just to be sure. England actually did win one in 2050, only, oh, 90 90-odd years after their last one. <laughs> ah, dearie me. Sweden coming second in there too. Colombia grabbing one as well. England coming runners-up in the most recent one as well. So let's quickly look at Paraguay. Where are they world ranking? So they're 25th, and they were as high as sort of 13th. 10 years ago, but um, I mean, actually, when you look at it, they've got Figuero, they've got to go Sixto Pereira, uh, Flore Florenciáñez, uh, and then there's Marcelo Medina, Elias Jiménez at Liverpool. So a decent number of good players that they've actually got, in fairness to them. Uh, but it seems that they definitely had a sort of a height of their fortunes were probably just off the charts here. I don't know if we can see a world ranking history. No, we can't. Not beyond 10 years. So my guess is they must have been top 10 comfortably. But they've fallen quite a long way since then. So I guess that's kind of what happens when you get teams like Paraguay that get a, a golden generation of footballers. But for them to win the World Cup is bloody impressive. So now on to the Euros, because why on earth not? So Germany again. Germany and Italy this time absolutely dominating. But England have won a couple of Euros, which is nice to see. Denmark grabbing themselves another one too, uh, to add to the one they won in 1992. So there's that. Holland in there, no surprises there. Uh, Denmark's really the only... Massive surprise package they got in there. Croatia going second again, um, but still not quite. Always the bridesmaid. But as it is, not too many standoffs. So I've got a load more stuff we're going to look through in other episodes, like Ballon d'Ors, African Cup of Nations, Team of the Years, uh, History of the Premier League, stuff like that, basically. Europa League, Champions League, all that jazz. Um, but for now, let's get into some players. And the first one is, of course, Oleg Kazhikov. Hopefully we can find them all. I did make sure I had them all keep history after retirement. So hopefully this shouldn't be a problem. But let's face it. 
there's a strong chance that I would say 80% of them don't go into management and a lot of them will have retired very early. There's a few that I already know did and that was before I even ran the simulation. I should also point out that unlike last time, I know nothing about what happened. I've literally just stopped the simulation now. I haven't even saved it at this point, uh, which is something I probably should do, but there you go. So yeah, this is all going to be news to me as well. So we're going to discover this together. So let's go find Oleg Kazhikov. Here is my man, Oleg Kazhikov. So he actually wasn't here for very long. I mean, he's there for three years, but he made 28 appearances for us. Um, the main sort of highlight of his career was very clearly uh, after he made the move back to Russia to Ahmad uh, in 2028. Spent 13 years back in Russia. He still won 33 caps for Russia and retired at the age of 36, which I've got to be honest, is actually quite late. Um, I find players tend to retire pretty early on this game. And the fact that he didn't is very, very pleasing. I don't know if we can see more beyond that. Uh, no, we don't seem to be able to. So we can sort of just sort of, he's, oh, hang on, we can, can't we? Yes. Yeah, so we can see a little bit more about him. But regularly putting in big performances, like he had one season where he played a lot for us and then drifted away before moving, I think, on a free transfer. Um, never actually played for Krylia Sovetov after moving there, but still did three years there. So fair play to the young Russian. I say young Russian. He's 36, but I wish that some of them would go into international duty. In fact, I want your prediction now. In the comments... Let me know how many out of the 100 players that we're going to be profiling, how many do you think actually had a managerial career or some kind of coaching career in some way? My guess is it's going to be less than 10, uh, in all honesty. And also, let me know who you think it's going to be. Um, obviously, you, you know, if there's any in this episode, it's a bit cheaty, but still. But get, get, your, get your bets in the comment. Right, next up, it's Hugo Sandoval, a player that's actually in the first team squad when we left this save. So I'm very excited about this one. Here we go. This is a little bit more like it. The guy is very, has a very varied career, it would seem to say. So... Here's how things went for Hugo Sandoval. Now, weirdly, there's another player in the game also called Hugo Sandoval. It's a weird one. I actually thought he would do better than this. It actually um, astounds me that he only got 21 caps for Bolivia. It's not the best of footballing nations, and I figured he'd do better than that, really. Only ever made 16 appearances for us, which I'm going to guess are probably all under me. Um, it would actually appear that he left in the summer after I left, which is often something that will happen. We'll also look at like the managerial history of... Uh, um, Notts County, of course. Yeah, he joined Stoke in the summer for £9 million. So, and only made two league appearances for them. Oh, dear. Uh, presumably went on loan to Blackburn there as well. Moved to Bolton for 3.6 minutes. So, he was kind of just sort of shimmying around the championship, it would feel. Uh, joined Cardiff City in there as well. Finally, sort of seemed to get himself back together again when he moved to Hamburg a little bit. Uh, one solid season at Hamburg, 30 appearances and five goals. And that seemed to buy him a move to Besiktas, although he was on loan at Hamburg. And that seemed to get him the move to Besiktas. But then he never really played for them. He was there for five years and made three appearances. Did score two goals in that first season, but just wasn't quite the career that we would have hoped for for the guy, unfortunately. Uh, all the honours he won were with Notts County. I wish he could have done that a little bit better. Next up, Giovanni Pejic, that massive, massive Croatian dude that I got briefly. Okay, now, now we're interested. This is the first one, lads. This is interesting stuff. So, career stats of Giovanni Pejic. Um... You'll remember I bought him for £30 million, and a lot of people kind of went, mm, that seems like a bit of an oof on that one there, Matt. And I think I kind of agree, which is why literally the following year, I think it was actually in January, I sold him to Dortmund for nearly £19 million. I couldn't believe that they were willing to pay us £19 million for this guy. So there's that. But you can see that he went on and had an insanely profitable career at Borussia Dortmund. He was there for, what, 16 years? That is quite something. Um, he obviously found his love there and eventually returned to Croatia in the end, this time for Dino Zagreb, for £1.8 million. Pounds. And, wow, he got a lot of assists when he was at Zagreb. I wonder if he's got good free kick taking. That's what it might have been. But, hey, that's really, really impressive for the guy. I don't know if we can look at his milestones. It's not, it doesn't work the same with the manager. So, um, he went straight into... Well, he didn't go straight into management. He, actually, he kind of did, to be honest, um, which is surprising. So, he was hired as Wrexham manager. Let's just see if there's any kind of important stuff. Uh, awards, competitions. Okay, yeah, so one against Macclesfield, beat North City, knocked out by West Ham. Okay, so they finished 15th in League One, but that was seemingly enough for him to get picked up by the manager, of, picked up by Blackburn, uh, which is quite surprising. So he went from managing Wrexham to managing Blackburn, and I guess they were probably, I don't know, in... We don't even know because he was hired in 20... Wow, he did not last very long at Blackburn, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Took a long time out of management after that uh, before going to Reading where he got them relegated from the championship. I guess he was kind of brought in as like a, a last ditch kind of saviour. But, and he was there nearly an entire year. And... Then he took a long time out of management and he's kind of had to just fall down. Again, he got Morecambe relegated from League One. Then again, he did also get them promoted from League One, it would seem. So, it's not, you know, not the worst thing. Let's just have a look at his overview here. So, four managerial jobs... Um, his win percentage is what? 34%. It's pretty low. 
ah, I can't lie there. It's, it's fairly low. But it's just nice to see that he's actually done something. Like, the guy has actually... He's been relegated twice, which kind of sucks. But one of those was with, a, was with a team that he did get promoted. He did get Morecambe promoted to League One. So I guess there's something. I think this guy would probably have more managerial future in him, potentially. So that's pretty damn nice. What's his actual attributes like? He's not a bad manager, to be honest. And I think at 46, with 128 caps for Croatia... The guy probably would still go somewhere in the rest of this save, I'd say. I think he's still got potential to turn this around, and that's really, really pleasing. Anyway, next up is El Haji Silla, and here he is. 36 years old, he retired at... Uh, he was, sent, was he from Senegal? I think he was. Um, 121 appearances for his country and 24 goals. So he was with us for a good five years, and he had a good time at the club. And I think that was, I mean, not the best time of his life. Clearly, the best time of his life was with Atletico. My goodness, this guy got around a little bit, didn't he? Even after, like, we sold him he his career just seemed to explode from then onwards which is kind of interesting so he was with us for a while he did one year at west ham which is crazy and then they sold him to bayern munich for a 12 million pound profit which is actually incredibly surprising so fair play he barely plays for bayern munich which presumably means yeah he was on loan at Sevilla. did a what would appear to be a solid job at Sevilla, came back for a season at Bayern Munich, then did nothing again. But then, somehow, off the back of that, joins Athletic, Atletico Madrid for £73 million, and then 231 appearances for the club later, and the majority of his career goals. And he retires at the age of 36, probably a bit of a legend in parts, having played for Atletico for, what, nearly 10 years. Um, it's a huge amount of money, but, I mean, you can't really go wrong. The guy won the Africa Cup of Nations as well, so that's pretty damn cool. Um... It's going to be obviously more interesting when we find players that are obviously still at Notts County or played for them for quite some time. But don't worry, there's a few of those coming up. Oddly, this one's weirdly stacked towards players that left the club at the moment. Uh, they seem to have been backloaded, which is, again, I completely randomised it. So I guess that's how things going up. But the next one is one of those guys that was at Notts County when we got to that point. So let's give it up for Darren Lever. So this is an interesting one. Man made eventually, he retires at 35, made 24 appearances for England and got three goals. So for me, he is the greatest Notts County player from an, uh, an international perspective of our save. I don't think anyone would have got close to that many international caps from England. Anyway, maybe someone since. I don't know. Maybe Joe Nolan, um, a guy that came through our academy who in the later stages. So, oh, 376 league appearances in total is actually not that much, but I guess that's oh, it's mostly on me, isn't it? Let's face it. So, lifted the Premier League in 32, 33, 34, but they also won it in 36 and 37. So, that's kind of cool. So, that means Notts County must have won it, but not in 35. But they did still win it two times more straight after I left, which is kind of good. Uh, FA Cup in there too, a Carabao Cup. Joined Celtic for £14 million, which is actually really low. I've got to be honest. Um, seemed to play okay though for Celtic because it managed to earn him a move back into the Premier League with West Ham for £20 million. Made 69 appearances for them. Um, and then he joined Ipswich for £4.1 million. And I guess, no, he actually won the championship with Ipswich in 2043, which would have been when he was about 33 years old. So a veteran at that point. Man managed to get Ipswich promoted back to the Premier League playing for him there. Scored no goals in that period. But my guess is it was just a good a good egg to have around the uh, the dressing room. That's pretty cool. Um, would have nice, been nice to see him go into management. But hey, at least he had an interesting career sort of after he left Notts County. Did a bit in Scotland then came back to the Premier League. So that's always nice. Next up, it's Francisco Guajardo. Remember him? I hadn't. And um, yeah, this will be very interesting. So you remember Francisco Guajardo. He was the guy that we brought in to essentially revolutionize that left-hand side spot when we were still looking for someone that could play as a winger there essentially didn't really work out for him at the club um you can see that from his goal record when you know a colo colo he's basically the same goal record to be honest i mean we only paid 3.8 million pounds so when we sold him to uh, independiente for 17 million i thought i had done an absolute bargain for out of that and um, and you can see that it kind of pans out in terms of his goal scoring ability sorry about that turns out there's a hurricane or it certainly fucking feels like it anyway so yeah francisco Guajardo, his goal record for independiente kind of says it all really uh it was actually even worse than he was with us he liked to score 17 goals playing from the left wing spot in nearly 300 appearances he's not really good enough but he did get 109 caps for chile and actually his goal return for chile is much much better but there you go that's francisco Guajardo, one of the forgotten men of this save i gotta say Next up is Mammy. My man, Mammy, did eventually get nine caps, I've got to say, for France, which I don't think he had at the time. So that's kind of interesting. Although, oh my God, literally, my man left in the very summer after we won the Champions League. Um, so I guess there's that. Admittedly, we somehow still made a profit on him. So originally, the deal was five million up front and then 10 over the next whatever. So we still made a profit on him somehow, but he literally was only at the club for six months. I mean, man won a Champions League, so can't really argue with that, can we? Then went to Burnley for a little bit. Didn't last particularly long at Burnley either. 
seems like one season at Burnley and didn't really do that well. Then he moved to Sporting and seemed to sort of finish, his off, finish off his career. Uh, in fact, he did eight years at Sporting, which doesn't really bode that well in terms of how many appearances he was making. Uh... Yeah, he had a couple of OK seasons. I mean, he's a defensive midfielder, so you kind of get what you're given with that. But he's, you know, he's done OK. We don't have too much of an attachment to old Mammy. Next player, though, we do have a bit of an attachment to, and that is Celso. Here we go. Took me a little while to find him because there's actually quite a lot of players called Celso in the game. Hmm. Retired at 34. 65 caps for uh, Brazil. Three goals in the end. So we know that he left us, of course, in 2033. That, that was, like, the pinnacle of his career. But he then spent quite a bit of time at Palace and just didn't really do a great deal, really. I mean, he was there for five years and he only made 49 appearances. Scored a couple of goals. God, he scored 26 times for us, which is actually ridiculously impressive. So I guess I'll take that. I mean, look at the, some of his team awards. Obviously, it was a one with us. But when you look at his time at Palace, my guess is it just gets slowly but surely worse. So first year, I actually didn't play that much, to be honest. Although I think that might have been in January. Actually, no, I'm not sure. I don't think it was. Then he had a really solid year for Palace. And then after that, it was just non-existent stuff, which is surprising because he was a relatively solid player for us. He just lacked that kind of... Um, competitive edge like he would make too many mistakes in big games not like my man dagger and vkb players i'm very interested to see where they turned out so but i can't see them even on the list right now so i think they'll oh no dagger will be in the next episode there you go a bit of a hint there uh, as will marvin suarez interesting times next up is dogokan keskin the i mean he actually did get two caps for turkey in the end um relatively similar sort of career to a lot of these players where he just never really got that many games in total to be only played 140 games in his entire career is actually very very low Considering he was 35 when he retired, it just seems that he spent a lot of time at clubs not playing, particularly at Zenit. That's insane. Uh, and the fact that he moved to Zenit for £23 million and then made 26 appearances for them in what appears to quite literally be 10 years. So in his 10 years at Zenit, the most appearances he made in the season was five. I mean, what's the bet? And that was probably substitutes and that. Eventually, he then joined uh, Atika Konyaspor over in Turkey and made 28 appearances instantly, which literally dwarfed the number of appearances he'd made in the previous 10 years. He was just clearly happy to take a paycheck. Um, and I think that cost him basically a pretty solid international career. Like Southampton, he actually played a good solid 31 games for them one year, but then kind of just drifted away a little bit. Probably because Southampton got really good uh, during that weird period and they ended up signing a lot of good players and they won the Europa League after all. Next up, just a quick one here, Consalo Boy. Remember, I brought him in as a sort of backup striker to a backup striker when we initially got um, a few other players at that point. I think he came in behind Isim Pepo and whatnot. So yeah, we signed him for £2.5 million. Eventually, I let him go uh, in February. Wow, he actually played there for a while for £1.2 million. And to be fair, 88 goals in 230 games for the New York uh, for New York City FC isn't that bad. Like 16 in 22 is a reasonably good response, to be honest. 14 in 27 isn't that bad either. Like to have three consecutive double figure seasons, then a little bit of an off season, but then three more straight after that. Those are solid returns, quite frankly. Only managed 24 caps for Chile and surprisingly only four goals. Um, but hey, I think the guy's done okay in his career. But again, be a manager, man. Okay, so this one's a little bit more interesting. Issa and Pepo, 110 caps for Dr. Congo and 48 goals, which is really solid. So if you remember... We brought him from TP, uh, TP Mazembe over in Dr. Congo, of course. Played for us for a little while. Eventually, uh, I think I let him go for free, where he signed for Monaco. And then literally one year later, or actually, no, it was two years later, in fact, Newcastle bought him off them for some insane amount. I actually can't remember what it was. Um, although, weirdly, did he leave them on a free as well? Maybe they did. I don't know. Did okay for Newcastle. I mean, only 23 goals. Like, his goal record was much better for us than it was for Newcastle. And it would appear that, once again... They kind of just let him go to Schalke on a free transfer. I don't know if he's actually had any transfer fees or not. It might be that he has, but because he had a staff career as well. And then, oh, that's awesome. He went back to TP Mazembe to finish off his career back in his home country. That's awesome. Um, so his best ever seasons were with Notts County still, it would seem. Uh, that year when he got, you know, he got 14, 13, struggled a little bit at Monaco. At Newcastle, he really did struggle. I mean, seven was his best ever. He still scored against us, mind. <laughs> As you do. Went back to DP Mazembe and of course started banging them in again. So let's see if we can see his uh, staff or is it on land? Oh, staff history. Okay. So, ah, oh, bless him. He was the Democratic Republic of Congo's under 20 manager for 10 years. That's pretty dope. Really like that. Uh, one, <laughs> wow, that's a bit of a strange one. So yeah, he won that and he also was runner up in the Orange Champions League uh, in Africa as well for a little bit. So there you go. Um, under Wow, he actually won the under 20 Cup of Nations though as the manager. So that's kind of cool. I guess that one does count. Although he then retired uh, at the age of 53. He obviously couldn't seem to quite find a job after that. But I think we'll count that as two. Uh, I reckon it's going to be 11 in total. That's my prediction. So that's two today. That's not too bad. Next up, Brendan Milnes. Well, hello there. Um, my man declares for New Zealand. 
this is interesting. This is this is more like it, people. Now, those of you that watched not, um, Polonia will remember that we had a lot of players that were declaring for Poland in the end because they were at the club so long. So this is kind of like that, but also not like that in any way. And also bloody fantastic. Now, I don't recall him ever having... I mean, not that we can find out. I mean, uh, we, born in Arnold, which is in Nottingham. Uh, my sister used to know people that lived there. So he... I don't think he had any kind of... Unless it was a second nationality, perhaps. I mean, he made his debut in 2040, um, which is... So he was 34 when he made his... Wow. He was like 33, 34 when he made his international debut for New Zealand. Um, I guess he may have... Either he has dual nationalities, which we didn't know about, or because he was in New Zealand for seven years, he may have naturalised, and because he'd never played for England in any level, he was able to play for New Zealand. Because it seems that we sold him to... I mean, he spent on loan at Charlton. I guess he joined Wellington Phoenix on a free transfer. 140 appearances for them in the A-League. Then went to Auckland City over in New Zealand for a little bit. And he won the OFC Champions League uh, with Auckland City. Okay, that's pretty damn cool. The fact that he actually did that is pretty dope. I don't know if you can see anything more specific there. Um, was runner-up in the OFC Champions League as well with Auckland City. So I think that's pretty cool. I think that's probably the most interesting thing so far, that a player went to New Zealand, declared for New Zealand, and made his first international appearance at the age of 33, I think, and then only made four of them, but still won the Champions League down there and was a runner-up as well. That's certainly not a way I pictured his career was going to go. I'm going to be honest with you. That is awesome. Next up, Kim Gui Hyun. Okay, so it turns out Kim Gui Hyun, for some reason, did not get saved, which is kind of strange. Um, so we're going to have to skip one, which is annoying. We'll do an extra one today. So Joe Nolan, this is one I was excited about. There we go. I knew it. I knew it. So this was a guy that came through the club. Um, you, you would have seen him in the youth intake. He was an attacking midfielder. I thought there was something quite solid about this guy. Um, unfortunately, we ended up accidentally releasing him, and I had to sign him back on quite a large deal in the end. So there was that. But he still played for Notts County for a decent amount of time. Like, that is a ridiculously good record. 16 years he was at Notts County in the end. And also, more importantly, 61 England caps, which easily makes him better than Darren Lever in that respect. Uh, in fact, I don't know if he scored more goals than Darren Lever, which is interesting. So we'll just sort of have a look at his landmarks because this will tell us a little bit about Notts County as well. So at England level, he won the, Euro he won the European Championship with England. Uh, he won the Nations League. Okay, so he was a Champions League runner-up with Notts County in 2036, champions of the Premier League in 38 and 39, won the FA Cup in 39. You, He won the Champions League with Notts County in 2039, so they have won it again. Uh, Carabao Cup in 41, Champions League runner-up in 41. They won the Champions League again in 45, Club World Cup and Super Cup. So this guy's won three Champions Leagues at Knox County and weirdly only two Premier Leagues. That's really weird. They won the Premier League only twice, it would seem, in that period. But Joe Nolan's going to won three Champions Leagues with Knox County and none of them I was managing. Also, more importantly here... As a player at Brentford, he won the Europa Conference League and was then runner-up in the Europa League at Brentford. So my man's got three Champions League titles, a Europa Conference League, and a, a UEFA Europa League runners-up medal, as well as, I think, two Champions League runners-up medals. This guy's had a career. Um, wasn't obviously a heavy goal scorer, but so the year I left was here which means that he, yeah, he got a couple of appearances over the next few years and then sort of drowned into the team, presumably replacing John Carlos or someone like that. And then, I mean, he's making some real, look at that, seven goals. It's not bad for an AI team. I'm impressed with what Joe Nolan's done. It also gives me a lot of hope as to what's not what Notts County have been able to do because what often happens in these saves is the team just kind of fades away, which is unfortunate. Next, just a quick one, Sam Hughes. Retired at the age of 33. Obviously, we know that he went to Bolton for a little bit, Barnsley. Randomly finished off his career at Al Sad, which is... Very surprising. But nevertheless, there you go. That's Sam Hughes. Oh, here we go. Paolo Assman. Greedy, greedy man. So, 63 caps for Argentina. One goal in there. Retired as a player at the age of 37, which is pretty old for this sort of game, generally speaking. When did he go to Wolves? Was that on loan? No, it must have been on loan. So, he joined Manchester City for £26 million because he's an idiot. And then he didn't even play for them very much. 46 appearances in five years at Manchester City. Uh, went to Wolves for a bit, did okay there, and then eventually joined a Chinese club for £6 million, where he actually played for a while. But, I mean, won the FA Cup with Man City, Charity Shield runner-up with Man City, not a lot with Man City. 
to be honest. It seems that his career kind of nosedived from that point, which is his own fault because he was promised decent money when he was with us and he chose not to take it. Just a quick one for you now. Brandon Fleming, who actually retired during the save um, after a few years at Bristol Rovers. So he left to go to Crawley Town after he left us from the Premier League, remember, then went to QPR for a bit. So he did get back to it for a little bit, but then dropped right back down, played for Bristol Rovers for a little bit as he finished off his career at the age of 32. Then we've got Curtis Jones, 33-year-old Curtis Jones, who of course was with us for a little while, but was actually just on loan from Liverpool. Then he actually joined us permanently and was here for a while, nearly 100 appearances, before moving over to the United States to go to San Jose Earthquakes. I can't remember how much it was. It may have actually been free. Um, played 127 times for them, and then eventually also joined Sam Hughes, although admittedly he wouldn't have been there at the time, at Al Sad and had an okay goal return for them. He was never going to score massive amounts, but he scored 67 times for himself in his career, which is not bad, I've got to be honest. Fair play, Curtis Jones. Didn't quite go to the levels that you might have hoped for, but just wasn't quite there. Maybe it was the hair. Next, we've got Yoon Dong Yong, who actually retired at the age of 37, having never scored a goal for his country, despite playing 140 games for them. So obviously, we know he was at Notts County for, what, only three years in the end. Did score 10 times for us, though, which is pretty impressive. He then made the switch to Celta Vigo for £1.2 million. Uh, only scored one goal in 100 appearances, basically, for them, and before moving back to Brentford for £10 million. Pounds. That's pretty decent money. Then moved over to Rangers for £4.9 million pounds and spent a decent chunk of time at Rangers up in Scotland, uh, like a long period of his career after he came back to the UK. So did he actually win anything interesting with his career? It must have done, surely. East Asian Cup winners, Asian Cup winners, some decent stuff in there. And he also won promotion uh, to the Premier League with Brentford, which is pretty dope. Although that was in the final season of the save, uh, it would seem. Then we've got my man Jalel Dabali, the guy that we sold to Southampton because they were willing to pay us £14 million for a player that we didn't really want. Um, and it seemed that it didn't work out too brilliantly for them because they lost money on the deal and he barely played. Went over to Schalke for a little bit, made some decent amount of game appearances. For, actually, he didn't really. Not even 200 appearances in his entire career. However, he did make 100 appearances for Tunisia. So there is that. Um, but it never really achieved that much in his career, it would seem. Finally finished off his career at Hertha, but only made 18 appearances for them in like four years. And now, the last player of today's episode. And oh, it couldn't be more perfect. It's Thomas Stepanek. How did he do? Retired at the age of 35. And this bastard played for Chelsea. This bastard played for Chelsea. How did this happen? Right, okay, sorry. What is this man's career? This is insane. Um, okay, so, started off at Victoria and Pills, and that much we already knew. Joined Notts County. Still got 36 goals for us in that five-year period. Went to Crystal Palace. Eight goals in 38 is actually not even that bad. It's probably a better return than he had for us, in fairness. Burnley, uh, that was a, uh, a loan spell, I think. 12 appearances. Then he joined Wolves for £32 million, because Wolves are mad, it would seem. And they got what they deserved from that, frankly. Although they did win the Europa Conference League. And then, I actually can't believe I'm saying this, he joined Inter for £77 million. And he scored 44 times for them, which again, again, is worse than he was for us. He seemed to be at his best when he was at Palace. But that is insane. And he joined Chelsea for 10 million quid. This guy played for Chelsea and then went back on loan uh, to his original club, Victoria Pilsen, at one point. What an insane career this guy's had. And he's won a European golden boy. When did he do that? That can't have been when he was with us, surely. Or did I? I must have mentioned that during the save if I didn't. So we know what he won with us. He won the Europa... Oh, no, he got the Europa League uh, final with Crystal Palace and then won the Europa League conference with Wolves, but then actually won the Europa League with Inter Milan. I did not see this guy's career going the way that it did, uh, quite frankly. Um, and I think it's very likely that, obviously, you know, Tony Harris and Thomas Stepanek will be taking the reins at uh, the team for the next save, not the one I'm managing, the other team. So that's going to be kind of interesting. And, I mean, the guy's got one hell of a history, so his managerial stats are going to be pretty damn decent. I've got to say, it's a bit of a redemption story in the fact that he actually worked his arse off, clearly, to earn that move from Wolves to Inter, and he played there for a good amount of time, to be fair to him. Scored 44 times playing in Syria and earned himself a move to Chelsea in the Premier League. So the guy did somehow work his way up towards the end of his career, surprisingly. So I guess we've got to give him credit for that. But, all in all, still a bell end. Right. And that concludes the first of the Looking Forward episodes. I don't know how long this is going to be. I obviously, we'll have trimmed some stuff out here and there to keep them quite short, but they won't be that short. They'll still be much longer than normal episodes. So I hope that's good for those, those of you that are interested in this kind of thing. Uh, first player of next episode, you're going to like this. It's Sean Lancaster. We're going to be starting with the man that we sold to Palace, which admittedly is a bit of a theme in this save. So that's where we're going to be going. Uh, we've got the likes of, let's just have a look, actually. We've got uh, Marvin Suarez is up in the next episode. Jesperson, Thomas Pichet, Costel Troffin, Dropkick McPhee, uh, Lee Lee, Dario Santana, all those guys to come in the next episode um yes so yeah enjoy if you've enjoyed this drop a like that'd be awesome if you're new to the channel subscribe um i stream on twitch still gonna be doing that at the moment while we sort out stuff for the next save on tuesdays and thursdays so go follow there as well and i will join you guys very soon thank you so much for watching hold your gun capybara bye bye